7, 1, 2, 5. <laughs> Dude, I can't hear nothing. There you go, fuck. That's me cervezas. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is that my beer? That's my first pour on this cast. <laughs> that shit was funny. I apologize. Well, yeah, we're but it's, here. It's a Java Latte Cold Brew Milk Stout. Java Latte. Limited release series. Thank you very much. Oh, shit. All right. It's from Victory. Crafted with local artesian coffee and low-key this shit's a stout and it's legit coffee oh it is oh it actually no, has it, caffeine like oh i don't know if it's let caffeine, me, let me give it a swig let me get some it tastes like legit coffee and I, let and, me get the coronavirus and you could take that from a coffee drinker since 2000 early 2019 it's i started drinking, good, yeah i started drinking coffee last year me too legitimately me too just because of where i work what? Pay six bucks a month and you get um, free coffee. Well, we get free coffee just to get free coffee. What do you mean? Like you guys don't have a coffee pot or nothing? No, we have a coffee pot, but the six dollars goes towards the coffee plus like the creamers and the sugar. Oh, that's and fucked have, up! Like, They're charging you for that? that. Yeah, but yeah. if you cool, think about it, it's a steal. We, no, coffee I get creamer that. is like fucking three dollars. No, I get low that, but like a lot of companies just pay for that. Because they know that's going to make their fucking workers work. Yeah, but at the same time, our, we always have these little things where, like little fundraisers and shit. Because at the end of the day, we have a, a unit or a staff meeting, all staff meeting, where mm-hmm. like they pay for a speaker to come and they feed us. And like it's an all day thing. What was they going to do with anything? Because all that them. money that you, we have like a snack shack. Like, all that money goes towards the end of the year type party type thing. So, they have to pay for the speaker. Like, it all goes Oh, okay. That. So, like it's a f- it goes into it's a, a fund, fund yeah. type thing. Gotcha. Yeah. They are just paying for the coffee. I'm like, but, no, because uh, if that, I'll just buy it. So, so uh, do you guys have a Keurig? We have a Keurig, yep. Um, my mama actually got Melissa a Keurig for Christmas. So, but, um, I was never a coffee drinker, like, ever. And the times that I had drank it, or have tried it is uh that that would give me like anxiety yeah i just didn't like it but and then there were times where i learned there was a chick i was dating for a while that kind of put me on and i still wasn't like a hundred percent on like what starbucks coffee or cure or so speak no this was a starbucks coffee at the time uh, or like small little coffee shops and uh when i was like oh it's cool i kind of like i started getting that anxiety feeling away like i started leaving and i was just just i had that like energy boost and obviously, you like going to the restroom and shit. Oh, hell yeah. yeah I, that's the best. <laughs> that's the key shit. Like, but and then I, I would never yeah. keep doing it. I mean, I was into energy drinks for a long time. And, yeah, and, I'm still... It's a, ba- it's a bad habit. Yeah, I mean, dude, I used to get them for free. So I had like Ooh, unlimited. What, Monster or Rebel? It was Red Bull or Monster uh, or Rebel. Rockstar, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like Red Bull. Uh, no, no. Um, at the time, it was uh, Rockstars that we were sponsored by. Those are so yeah, they're gross. fucking... But um, <sighs> I like Monsters... But um, Red Bull is what I've been drinking lately. But yeah, long story short, I haven't been drinking coffee lately because I've been taking a a fucking the powder fat burner, like before, like the gym or something like that. I haven't been going to that either. But um, but yeah, so so that shit helps. But I started drinking coffee, like you said, twenty nineteen, late twenty nineteen, like in November. And dude, it's like the fucking game changer. It's fucking crazy. But I, I fucking hate it because I get anxious. Like I want to fucking do shit. And, oh, because you get hype. Yeah. I do too. And then also I drink it in the morning right when I get to work. So, so I get to work at 730. If I make a cup there, they have a Keurig. So I bring my little fucking thing with me. You put sugar and cream every yeah. day. Yeah, and then by 7 30 i'll drink it uh by 8 30 i go take a shit <laughs> and then i drink it as well because i used to low-key 1 30 i'll come back from lunch put a monster in the freezer and then by three it's like low-key frozen yeah so it's like a pop school slushy type shit so i'll drink that but then i switched to coffee at like around that time and i that's just way more i i believe it's way more healthier than drinking a monster every single day. But not if you're putting cream or sugar in it every day. Yeah, but I don't fucking feel that whole shit up. I put you're still a, a doing dose. it every day. But towards a monster, that shit's 
I could feel when you open the monster, you could smell the chemicals coming yeah, up there. Yeah, it's like, true. come on. Your, your piss turns a different color, too. That's just. R- I drink the white monsters, though. I, I switch from the green to the oh, white yeah. ones. Because the green ones, bro, when you open those. That's straight fucking. That's chemical. Like, you, that hits you in the fucking face. Yeah, that shit will cure the coronavirus. <laughs> we gotta talk about That's a myth. it. <laughs> so I wonder if the coronavirus is gonna actually like um disrupt the liquor or, or beer industry. Cause dude, you have to be super clean. You have to be super like on point with everything. Let's say if someone contracts it, they can't sell fucking probably anything that they've just brewed. Or um you just never know. I mean, you would think it would go up because because people like would rather drink because they're like fucking oh at home or depressed or stressing out or whatever. No, nah, it's going to go up. People are going to start drinking more because you're stuck at home, like you said. Plus, you have your kids getting on your damn fucking nerves. <laughs> and it's just so much easier to be drunk and handle your kids. You love them more. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a fact. But, I don't care what anyone says. When you have a couple beers, you end up loving your spouse and your kids. Or at least, it's not that you love them more, it's that you show your affection more. Because I know when I smoke or when I drink, I'll play with my kids for an hour. Toys. (laughs) Toys. Toys, my guy. (laughs) I'll build Legos. I'll do puzzles. It's a whole nother level. You just get lost. Like, you're a kid again when you do shit like that. That's true. When you're sober, you're like, I'm tired, blah, blah, blah. But when I have a couple, uh, I have two beers, just let me have my two beers or let me smoke and we can do the damn thing all night. No, that makes sense. But I'm just going back to it being a virus and it'll, I think it'll kind of disrupt the industry. Well, I think it's because they're saying you don't want to put your immune system in like a well no okay that's two different things if you drink you weaken your immune system yeah. but i'm saying it's a fucking virus and if it gets into a building where beer is made and you're just distributing oh, okay. you're you're, you distribute yeah, yeah, yeah. that virus throughout the country in liquid form then you're poisoning the whole it, country is it contracted liquid like can you contract it that way I or is it just something by you touch yeah i Maybe. don't know Maybe if that person was handling the bottles and you're drinking out of that bottle. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of... I pour my shit into cups. There's a lot of shit. I mean, you you just don't know. I, don't, I mean, I have no idea. I'm, I'm going to keep it 100. just thinking. Every uh, time I feel like I'm about to be sick, I drink. And I don't get sick. <laughs> That's an Eric fucking way of thinking. Eric but said, it's a fact. If you drink liquor or tequila, like say you have a sore throat, off. or yeah. say you feel like a cold coming on or like a head cold... Low key, I'll drink. That's what I feel like. That's what Nyquil does, right? What well, just get you sleepy? <laughs> that, but at, at the same time, it kind of is sleep not the best cure for when you're feeling sick. Like that's what you want to do is sleep. No, I mean, I mean again, I, bro, science, but I feel Nyquil. <laughs> <laughs> Nyquil is fucking obviously a medicine, and alcohol isn't or liquor isn't, but. But I think what liquor, Eric said, liquor is a mess, and I, I, yeah, I, I will fight that. <laughs> <laughs> liquor, uh, Eric says that you know he'll drink tequila or rum or whatever it is to just try to cure the whatever sickness he has. Well, my grandma or told me when we were younger and when we were teething, she would just put rum on our gums. Oh yeah, and that, that's like thing. that was just like a, I don't know if that's like a Mexican thing or there was the, or another not, Mexican or, thing was like they'll give you a little bit of liquor so you'll fall asleep. Well, yeah, you have to think like back in the day they would. Heroin, what heroin was sold? So it was cocaine. As a yeah, all that shit was sold as a as a pain reliever. Yeah, basically, you know what I mean. Until they want to start making money off that shit, and then the drugs on war, and then getting into the prisons and all that shit, privately owned prisons based on people that were doing drugs, and then filling those shits up and making money. Could you imagine doing drugs in prison? I can't imagine being in prison because I'm half white, half Mexican. I don't know Spanish, so I don't know who the fuck I hang out with. I was hanging out with fucking. But I'm just saying, like, can you like doing drugs in prison? I would fucking hate that. Imagine being stoned in prison in a place where there's killers. Yeah, but if you're an addict, then especially in that situation, you're trying to get the fuck out. You're trying to. That's what I'm saying. That that that's an addict, though. But I'm saying me, I'm not. 
you're not. So it's like if we get stoned or whatever in prison, I think I'd be a little fucking paranoid. I'd be paranoid. I'd be paranoid walking the mall stone. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a fucking video game when I'm driving stone. But like, um, there's this fucking person I know, um, super close, that he got caught having someone bring in drugs for him. Oh, really? And we might have him on the podcast when we have video. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on bringing him on because... He's a family member. I just know how to act if he... Because people don't understand when they come to this podcast, they can't drink how they usually drink. Like, people think they could... People come on this podcast thinking it's no thing. Like People drinking. don't understand how long they're drinking yeah. for, too, because we record eight you get, episodes like an hour. Yeah, you get lost in the conversation, but you're still drinking at the same time. And uh, yeah, So I'm going to have to tell him. We're going to have to uh, have like a fucking informational video before they come on <laughs> why know, when he like, gets drunk he gets crazy himself, or what but, well yeah being in prison for four years <laughs> gets you going in pri- going into prison not having a cell phone then coming out to an iPhone is like a whole fucking <laughs> like that's a whole fucking thing <laughs> that's a fucking game shit like yeah. just imagine that coming to the world and then all of a sudden you have all this shit like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi wasn't even in high school. Uh, you had dial-up in high school. Yeah. You feel me? So coming out to all this shit is like, that's just like a shock to your system. I don't even understand. I mean, think about all the different shocks, like depending yeah. on when you were incarcerated. Yeah. Let's say if you went in when there was slavery and then you get out when there wasn't. Let's say... Um, well, prison is slavery. Not really. Because yes, they're not forcing is. you to fucking... Well, they are. Build something. Well, back in the day, they would have you. I don't know because it's a thin line between love and hate. Because this is a conspiracy. I feel like I'm turned to Scott though. Um, <laughs> it's not slavery. I'll tell you that right now. But they're having you. It's a, no because slavery. Back in the day, they have you work for nothing. I need you to understand what slavery so is. You're being taken from somewhere and sold and forced to do something. You're in jail because you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, but then also you're in jail because of the laws. Now marijuana is legal, but back then marijuana wasn't. Like you know what I mean? So you're, yeah, but that's just one scapegoat argument. Like yeah, I said, that's, right <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> let's talk about the real shit. Someone murdered someone in there. Well, that's cage. different. But well, like the drug laws, the drug laws. Come on now. Like, yeah, but you can't say fucking. That's I, the reason why it's slavery. <laughs> The fuck tomato tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> this is ignorance is bliss baby that's how i live my life <laughs> that should be a day of a podcast ignorance is bliss <laughs> Shh, why did you say that loud? we could have came up with that shit nah but <clears throat> yeah it was crazy he went in damn i don't even think i would be able to survive my guy like he went in 2000 i want to say 2008 Oh, Do we have that. Wi-Fi? We didn't even have that. Like that's probably the beginning, mm. but we miss. It. If you're poor, you don't have that. I had a in 2008. I had a stolen sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it off of a homie that stole it, found it at a party and took it, and then I just put a SIM card in it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I got called to the office because some chick said that was her sidekick. I was like, no, nah, I bought it off some other guy. So, anyways, I'm not a snitch. I didn't tell him, but. Did you keep the sidekick? Snitches get yeah, kept the sidekick. How the fuck are you gonna prove that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. Well, what were you through. going around saying I got a stolen sidekick? Nah, but <laughs> this bitch just point that out. Nah, she just knew the dude that sold it to me, so she thought. Uh, oh, and he was, was at the party. Yeah. And, oh, oh, yeah. So, so like, you she, had just, her sidekick. she just connected the dots, but whatever. Yeah. I remember back then. I got. I had. Mel- I borrowed Melissa's iPod, like the big ones. Mm-hmm. Like everyone the wanted ones. them. Yeah. yeah, they carry a lot more. And it had the screen on it and everything, like the big screen. Yeah, and somehow it got stolen. I don't even Something know. Something was stolen. soothing about spinning that wheel. It got said. stolen um, in class somehow. So I bought a stolen one from the homie, and I gave it to her. But it was engraved in the back <laughs> <laughs> with someone's initials. <laughs> So what'd you do? She I just, just gave it to her. You didn't try to it's keep it. iPod's an iPod, motherfucker. <laughs> take it. She, she took it. But then she gave it back because she broke the screen. So back then I had to like, I knew the rotation of the little circle thing. Mm-hmm. So I was able to go like the clicks wise to the certain playlist and I would just push play and it would always play that playlist. <laughs> That's fucking funny. 
That was like, baby. It's hard out here. It's, that shit's funny. Like, there's little things like that. Like, I remember having phones when they're dying like that, where it's like you have to kind of figure out, like, hey, if I push the button a certain way or if I do this, I do that. You kind of just do whatever you can because you're broke, <laughs> like, to make it work. Cell phones came a long way. Yo, so I want to hear about your fucking transmission. I warned you about that since You've been the beginning but of this podcast. I've also been putting in that thing that you sent me. I've gone to AutoZone and put it in Yeah. I think it's, it's a 2005 Magnum. Yeah, but that shit was fucking skipping. Yeah, I was skipping like a motherfucker. Like, skipped to my loo. But um, <laughs> it finally just gave out. And <clears throat> I'm not the richest motherfucker out here. So I don't have like $1,300 in my savings. So it was a bitch like. It's still a bitch. I haven't got my car back. Um, it should be this weekend. But thirteen hundred. Oh, so they wanted. So either I could have done seven hundred and got a used transmission with no warranty, mm-hmm. and you don't know how long that's gonna last. And is this like someone's doing it at their house? They're doing it in Little Mexico. What's Little Mexico? Home Gardens. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a homie of the homie of the friend's homie, but um. <laughs> Everyone's getting a piece, and I trust them, motherfuckers, because they've crossed the border together and all that shit. But um, <laughs> so seven hundred used with no warranty, so you don't even know. They don't even know how long it'll last you. So say I did that, spit out seven hundred. Then a year later, I spit out another seven hundred. That's already fourteen hundred. When I could just get a new one rebuilt for thirteen hundred. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just do thirteen hundred. So. Luckily, um, wait, are they just rebuilding your transmission or are they putting a new one in? No, they're putting a new one in. Oh, okay. So it's 1300 new and they're doing the labor. So it's probably going to end up being like 1400, 1350, 1400. He hasn't told me yet. Um, it's Melissa's dad's friend. So obviously he's going to do what he can to yeah, um, try to hook it up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but like I was saying, I don't have, I have savings. I don't have 1300 savings. Yeah. You know what I mean? I live. So you had to borrow the money? Yeah. I had to borrow. Well, I had, I have a thousand that I could get, go away with that not going to hurt me. But I had to borrow uh, another five from my mom. <clears throat> she actually gave me that tonight. So hopefully I don't have to use all that because I have to pay her back. So 250 each check. So two pay periods. Yeah. But that's a bitch. Like, it's kind of I don't know how our parents survived back in the day because I can I can if I was to leave at eighteen okay, if I was single with no kids I could survive. But now that I have kids and I'm not single, it's like I don't know how they survived back then. My mom had four boys, solo dolo, and she was able to like figure shit out and I was like I trip out on all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like I don't I trip understand. out on like because I knew like when I would see like my parents doing taxes because I would need their tax information for, let's say, uh, for FAFSA or whatever. Um, I, I knew how much they made. And it wasn't shit, you know. And like they were able to fucking have a mortgage, have cars, fucking this and that. But we don't understand like, the struggles that we don't know the underlying struggles of what they maybe they had to do. Like yeah, there was definitely struggles. In maybe debt, side hustles. obviously, there was. Probably some debt, and there was uh, credit cards like a bitch, and there was not spending money on themselves. Yeah. Now I understand why I lived on a dollar menu <laughs> and a cup of water. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like going to Del Taco, like Del Taco was our thing. Like, okay, you can get a bean and cheese burrito, dude. Did you get the a card in water. football? The what? The card in football? You get sell the cards, the discount cards in football. Oh yeah, the yeah. The, the, you get for any fun reason. Yeah, you'd get fucking um. Uh, Two bean and cheese, half pound che- two half pound bean and cheese burritos for a dollar, dude. That was like the best shit. But ever. I feel like we're so like, I don't. I'm so conditioned on doing that. I still do that to this day. What do you mean? I don't get meals. Oh no, ever. I ever. I, I'll get. Oh, can I? So say I go to Del Taco. Can I get two bean and cheese burritos, um, red sauce, and then a large fry? See, I, I tell people this all the time. It's like because I grew up with a lot of siblings. I never got it's a, a number. Thing, I, I never got a number. Yeah. And people were like, what do you mean a number? A combo. I never got a combo. And um, it was always like, hey, we're going to get the hamburgers and 
we have water at the house. Yeah, yeah we have so drinks at the house. Yeah, that's true. Okay, cool. We have little bag tips. So people though. always trip out. Like I remember my aunt. I, I, for whatever reason, I went with her somewhere, and and she was like, "Hey, we're at Carl's Jr." And she was like, "Order something." And I just ordered like a famous star, like the one burger that we'd always get. And she was like, "Oh, what about your drink?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'll just get this." She's like, "Well, oh, just get the combo with the fries." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't want fries." What? Like she was just tripping out, and I was even because I'm not used to it. Yeah. Till this day, if you ask most people, I don't really care for fries. I don't ever get fries. I don't eat fries. Yeah, they're good, but I don't. I don't need them, and I don't care for them. And I think it's just extra. And I remember Daniel would make fun of me because there's been times when we do get like a like a, a full nut, like a a combo. And then he sees that, and he used to do the same thing. I would have to finish the fries first before I touch my burger, because I just feel weird eating them at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, you're weird. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> <laughs> no, but even my kids now, like, you're gonna be in cheese burrito. Like, it's just, it's just. I I think it's a good thing though. Yeah, I would say so. Cause fuck, cause <laughs> I think it should be a treat to go out to eat you know what i mean because like I when i was a kid it, it was a treat oh shit we're going to fucking the, a restaurant oh Damn, dude a restaurant you know was I mean? always like, a huge deal oh, going to El Trito. oh shit we're going to coco's like so your dad shows out he, he might order like a cadillac or like a bit like a alcoholic beverage you're like oh shit that that's expensive a, yeah. now i understand because last night even last night i came home from the gym i was eating and i had a corona yeah with my food See, like I back out on then that. I was like, God damn, how does he just drink that? Yeah, part? I tripped so, out on that with my dad. It's like, he would have like, a, like you said, like a Corona or, or Bud Light. But yeah, I think it was like Bud Light. Um, and he would just eat it with his food, drink a beer. And he wouldn't. He wasn't an alcoholic at all. Uh, we'll never get drunk. What's but, an alcoholic though? Well, I, I guess if you have like a problem where you, and it you're actually affects your work, drinking to get shit. drunk. I've probably yeah. never seen my dad drunk, and if I have, it's like once with the uncle. And, and it was like yeah, thing. and it was like he was he was like just chilling. Yeah, I mean he was, you could tell he was tipsy and all that shit, but not a big deal. He still he was still knowing what was what was going on. Didn't embarrass himself or nothing. But but yeah, trip out like he would have a beer and eat dinner, and that was just a normal thing. He'd fucking bite into a chili. And it was just, that's just a fucking normal thing. I always thought, like, that's fucking gross. Like, how can you enjoy that beer and eat? And now I can fucking do that on that, like, nothing. But also, I think having kids and then drinking, it kind of, like, not getting drunk, but getting tipsy where you have, like, three beers. You say it helps. It gets you to a point where you let your guard down and you show more affection. You show more love. I don't know. I don't want to say it's Latino thing. I don't want to say anything like that, or it's a man thing. I just feel like I think it could when be I, a you thing. It, it might be. It might even be that. But it it when I feel like when I drink, I let everything like I let it like a like the wall goes down, I'm and like, I feel I feel more like I can connect. I can I feel more emotional. Like I can speak to my kids more on an emotional level. Like I can. Like they can, I don't know if it's, I don't even know. I don't even think it's probably, it's probably not good. <laughs> no, you know that, what I mean? That's why, that's what I was, what I was going to say is like, cause I have the same thing. So like when I go somewhere, hang out somewhere, it's like, I want to get that drink in to get that edge off. Well, I feel like that's where we connect is like, that's where we've had our best conversations where we're kind of like not drunk, but like on the verge of like, we've had a couple drinks and we've had yeah. conversations like, i feel like that's how the podcast came together because I, I still reflect on that one night where we were just snowboarding and we we're just sitting there watching the patriots i feel like the patriots are on the tv or something like we were just watching a football, football game, game yeah. and we just had started like talking i wanted to watch ufc too i remember it was at mountain high but I, but yeah and then I, I, there's been a few different occasions when that happens or that's happened with us but but yeah it's it's just one of those things where like you want to hang out i like to get the edge off not an alcoholic at all. I don't ever really get drunk. And if I do get drunk, it's rare and, and it's fuck it. Who cares? It's fun. It was last night, but okay. But oh, yeah. <laughs> I have never seen a hangover right now. I forgot about that. But uh but yeah, so fucking um I, I get what you're saying, but I, I think it can be bad if if you rely on let, let me have a drink so I can fucking enjoy this with my kids yeah. and blah blah blah. But do you think that's probably why our dads drank like that at, at dinner time, or you think it was just like a flavor thing? Or I feel like I think it was more like oh, let the that edge off, be. like the. Like, I think it was it was probably that edge off, like let me just fucking relax because they would see, they were like, laborers. They well, would, my dad was a yeah, laborer. Yeah, he was a laborer. He warehouses a yeah. whole lot. So so I think that that was his way to relax, mm-hmm. take the edge off, and probably chill them out. 
um but it was never like multiple drinks it was just like a like a beer a beer or two uh we're talking well yeah that's what i'm saying like you don't have to I'm not saying I get drunk with my kids. I say I I have two. Like it gets you like two gets you to a certain point where you're not so tense. Yeah. I like you're able to let everything go from the day. You know what I mean? Like everything just flows off of you, and then you're just. I just feel like I'm better. I'm a better communicator. I'm a better better of like feeling a vibes of like the moment. You're that in the sense. moment. That's why more. people have wine. Like you know, wine with dinner. I think I mean that's what I imagine. What, um, did you ever take your dad's boots off? Boots off? No. Oh, that was uh, my dad did that. Like no, with, he had his boots off before he came in the house. Oh, uh, okay. Now he would he would go in there and like he he had work boots or he would wear Harley boots for work and uh, would always fucking try to pull those shits off and it was hard as fuck that or and their toes were nasty as fuck. Yeah, I mean, because they work fucking standing <laughs> up and it, yeah, that shit's funny. And yeah, their hands, at a like, warehouse. when my dad, when I would lay with my dad to watch TV, like, his hands are, like, super, like, just up, like, the the fuck yeah. up, like, hard as fuck. I'm like, damn, damn. Yeah, put in work, dude. That's manual labor. Just it, crazy. It's crazy how, now that I sit at a desk and just, like, it's considered, you would consider it, like, a bitch work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, to those it's smarter people, though. Yeah, it's smarter if on yourself, on your body, on on career, on longevity. I would say, um, yeah, you can be, you can probably. I mean, I know you can make bank in, in construction and, and doing manual labor and stuff like that if you're like a foreman, which is basically the person that chills and tells everybody else what to do. That does what we do now. But yeah, <laughs> but, but they're standing somewhere else or like in a desk on a trailer somewhere. But they went through all that hardship before they got to the level sometimes um but no i think i don't know like i've, I've always kind of been like that because i've never liked it because i've done manual labor and i've never and i've never liked it and i always try to like tell myself that i'm not going to do it like if i don't like it, it it's just kind of bullshit like i think you should use a, the stronger muscle and it's using the brain it's like if you can figure out a way where i can do something that someone else doesn't know how to do and i don't have to like physically be tired or looked at as a just a fucking number work smarter not harder yeah i mean going into a warehouse like i mean like i would get high and I've go in there all that shit, or yeah. whatever and it's like i felt like i was just fucking being heard like a sheep like like sheep like i felt well, like you I, are yeah you're just being you have a quota to fill and they're gonna use that use you you're a tool yeah it was just well, like still a tool. now you're a tool. yeah i feel like you didn't matter like yeah. you're just a hundred percent you're a plug in. and you've all i mean we've all worked like the, maybe through an agency where they'll send you out these yeah. random jobs and you know, like, oh, if they don't like you, like, you're out as soon as. So it's like, that was, like, so trippy, um, realizing that. So I think um, that that kind of motivated me, if anything. And when you're, like, because I've worked through 10 agencies, and when they We're put Daniel. you, yeah, when they put <laughs> you at a certain job, like, when you get there, those people already have, like, a unit, like, yeah, you have to try to fit in with the whatever situation yeah, there's, there's they have a bunch of haters. Yeah. yeah, and they're, like, dudes that didn't they don't have no education i'm not saying like okay they didn't graduate high school if you didn't graduate high school then yeah you're unless you had a really gradu- fucked up life yeah, yeah like you was probably a dumbass some crazy <laughs> shit but um even the I, I wasn't even i didn't even do homework in high school i still graduated so you're just a fucking <laughs> idiot but um idiot. yeah like you have to get into their crew somehow and it's it's crazy how in high school, there's little sets, and even outside of high school, there's sets in yeah. everything. Even where I'm at now, like, yeah, same. There's little clicks. Every it, it, it's just so crazy how that shit just travels from high. It's it feels so childish. Like, I don't know. That's probably why I feel like I don't get. I feel like I could, I should be further where than I am, but at the same time, I don't kiss ass. I don't fucking play that game where. I treat everybody the same. Like it's it's a weird it's I, it's I a weird line. It's I was just thinking about that. It's so trippy because, like, where I work at now, um, and I've been on the other side of this. Um, where I work at now, I'm in a position where I deal directly with the owner, you know, and I, I deal directly with like higher management. Um, so like everyone else that's you know that's that's not involved in that, they uh, I could sense some type of hate. Best friend. Well, there, there's at first there's hate, there's confusion, 
And then they start to realize. And, and you're younger. And their whole demeanor changes and I'm younger and they don't understand why me. And then you start to see like when people figure it out and then there's a like, go-getters and, they, and you see them and you probably never even noticed them before and they give you that fake little smile like, what's up, what's up? Or like try to get like your attention and you're like, oh fuck, this is trippy. And like now they feel like I'm some type of gateway to like a better position. And I'm like, uh, I was, that happened to me today and I was like kind of tripping out on that because I've been on the other side of that where it's like, Oh, I know this guy has a reputation where he's doing this, he's doing that. That's probably the person to get cool with to try to figure out my next move. So, But that's like, when you're at that situation and you have like an eight-year-old and you try to tell him you treat everybody the same, like, should you at that age be telling you like, oh, just learn how to play the game? This shit's a game. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Low-key, like, should you tell him oh treat call. everybody the same There's or players. just trying to f- just try to get yours in business and and business fucking, is trying to get yours in it's business profit. in business and in 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 the streets there's always players and players are the guys that are fucking there to play and and they have moves and they fucking uh they're gonna be strategic and i think uh it's a sad way it's a sad thing to realize when you're like hey like you know to move up in this world, you gotta fucking make Step the right on chess some moves. Motherfuckers. Yeah, and and things are just, or, or yeah, that might happen, or or you might have to fucking um, always try to like not settle, even if it's something you're super comfortable in. You're like you have to learn to live in the discomfort. Uh, there's just a lot of shit that goes into like you know moving up, and I think but a lot of it has to do with loyalty though too. Nah, but loyalty is dangerous too, man. I mean, I've I've been through that too, where it's like you're so loyal to something because you feel like it's gonna do well, and you feel like these people are gonna take care of you, or, or this company's gonna take care of you. And then when it comes down to it, and you get to that point, it, 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 it didn't turn out the way that supposedly it was promised, or they'll spin the, your wheels for a long time. See, imagine having to like comprehend or like to let your child know, like. Shit's like that's real, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, a lot of that stuff's learned and, through experience. And what's the it, yeah? A lot of it's, but I would like to just give him that information before he had to experience it. See, but like, you can't really comprehend that too, or they can't even comprehend it at it at that age. You know what I mean? And that shit could still happen to us. Like, let's say this podcast takes off, and we start to talk to certain people, or start to get certain people on. There's different ideas. People try to pull you away in different direction. Blah blah blah. Um, things that you're not like a lot of the people that sit around the table aren't experienced with so it's like like we're still there's still other levels to to everything so like we like I, I still know that I don't have it all figured out you know what I'm saying I don't think any of us have it that's figured what, out yeah but. that's what I'm saying is like the same thing with kids it's like I think a lot of it goes with experience but I think you can kind of give them that blueprint but it's up to them on like how they're gonna build it. If they won't even listen to you, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't have kids, but I'd imagine that's how it is. Cause I fucking not, not to say nothing about you, cause you don't really do this, but like when I talk to girls and like if they have a kid, I fucking hate how every single thing that they complain about is because it's like you don't understand, you don't have a kid. But I, I, but when I get, it, I get from a female's perspective, is. I feel like it depends on if the dad's in the life or not. No, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that makes sense too. But it's also like I get that it's fucking hard and it's not easy. But at the end of the day, there's other people that can fucking do it, and they don't complain the way you do. You know, so I think it's, it depends on the person. You know, some moms are driven as fuck, and they don't complain. They don't do anything, and some aren't. Some weren't just built for that shit. So it's it's just a trip. You said your mom had four brother or four. Uh, oh, yeah, I have uh, three brothers plus me. That's four boys. She was able to. F- I don't even fuck. I don't even. I need to ask her. So I don't even. She was able to figure the fuck on that your own. Shit out. On her own, especially. What about your sister? That's through your dad. Yeah, my bro- my sis my br- my dad has a. Four. I have four sisters. Oh shit. Yeah, because your sister looks just like you. It's a trip. Yeah, my, my, uh, 
My stepmom had uh, four girls with my dad. That shit was this shit's all fucked up now though, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's depressing. Yeah, but yeah. shit, I have seven brothers and sisters. <laughs> That's crazy. Nuts. And I'm the oldest, and I still don't got my shit together. And they come and look at me. They come, they look at look to me, and like, bro, I'm like, I tell them like. I just, I don't got shit for you. Like, <laughs> I can give you information. I gave my my sister, my one of my sisters. She works for UCLA. Um, she's a nurse. That's dope. Yeah, they're doing their shit. Like, I've have mad respect for them because they're able to. They're on their own. My dad is a, doing his. He fucked up. He's doing his own shit and can't financially support them and their step they don't talk to their mom which is my stepmom and they're able to do their their own they live on their own all this shit like that and i'm like gives them that drive yeah i'm like you guys are better off than i am because i don't even know if i know i can survive but for some reason i've been like taken care of you know what i mean like i went for my mom then i went once i had a child i went with Melissa and her parents, they're well off. You know what I mean? So, like, I've never really had that situation where I had to struggle, struggle. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. my sisters, I respect them and my, my other brother. Um, I respect, like, I look up to them. It's crazy how I'm the oldest, but I look up to them because they're able to figure shit out. Yeah. They've been put out on, they, the, on their own. To. And yeah. they, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes I, f- I wish, like. You had that struggle in a way? You need the struggle to figure shit out and to make shit happen. No, I agree. And 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 uh, me and Melissa, I don't. We haven't had that. Like we've had, we've been able to live. We we've had a stable life. You know what I mean? Like nothing's been it. Nothing's. Maybe the worst thing that's happened to me is after the after pay my right transmission. It's thirteen dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? But my sister is like, she had she has a kid. She's not with the dead. Like, she has her own apartment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, I feel like that struggle puts you, you're more equipped for life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they've all been able to figure shit out. And, and I know if that happens to me, I'll figure it out. But at this moment, like. I think a struggle does do that. I mean, yeah. I just I, use you my need parents. need struggle, bro. I use my parents as an example. Like, they came here with nothing. Typical immigrant but I, story. At, yeah. At the same time. I think that's why Melissa is so driven and got to where she is it's because her parents are like that, are immigrants as well. Like, it's pushed her to, like, yeah, Melissa's busted her ass, like. Yeah, no, I've seen it. And, uh, and at the same time, I feel like it's, I don't want to say, I don't want to take credit, but at the same time, like, I've used, I've been working since I've been 17 and, like, We've been together for a long time, and I've got this job I had, and then she's been able to go to school without having to worry about like anything because I've been able to take care of our kids and with yeah. her parents' help and stuff like that. So at the same time, like, it's just cool know. how that lined up. Yeah, it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, we are just fucking lucky as fuck like, that but, we're in that situation. Going back to it, it's like, why? Like, what do my parents like? Um, their stories are crazy, but. That's I why mean, I don't we need get to have it. your dad on well, and Melissa's dad on. And, oh, yeah, we did talk about the very first that. podcast. So, like, um, yeah, there's, they're both my parents. Their stories are crazy. But what I was just going to say was, is they had a dad had to learn how to fend for himself, like, right away at, like, fucking 13 years old in Costa Mesa, fucking predominantly white area. Well, yeah. Um, Fuck, yeah. By the beach, bro. Come yeah, on, and bro. like... Um, and yeah. higher class. That's a... Yeah. And then he, he got to the point where he had brand new fucking muscle cars and people were like, how the fuck did you get that? Boy, that his dad had the same shit. I was like, yeah, you strive for all that shit. And, and they grew up poor. So it's like, they're not, they weren't out there spending on stupid shit. Like they were doing the most regular shit, probably playing sports, whatever it was, not spending a dime, just saving the whole time. Well, Melissa's then, dad, not to cut you off, but oh, I'm going to cut you off. Bitch. But uh, Melissa's dad tells me all the time, because he's into cars like that too. Like he had cars like that, like a Thunderbird yeah. and all that shit. Camaro, he's like, if you want it, buy it. Yeah, I'm like, what? The, what, is it, what? <laughs> like, he's like, if you really want it, you'll figure it out. And yeah, you buy it. And I think that's like that's a mindset. No, I think coming it is from that, like it a, is th- like a, that country and then coming up tr- 
like striving to get to the United States. Like Melissa's dad multiple times got kicked out. Got kicked or got caught. Got caught and got sent back, but he kept trying to come back. And I and I wish I had that and I wish I had that mindset where like the struggle of trying to come from a dirt poor place, like probably maybe your parents were as yeah. well. And then just trying to make shit happen, period. Like Well that, that's what that was and, and what I was saying is like at my age he already had two kids. three kids. <laughs> three kids in a house. <laughs> like yeah. like fucking and barely making anything you know and married to my mom and, and the whole deal and i'm just like that's i mean obviously the economy is different and everything that's different. what i'm thinking too yeah. but but still like that's just a trip and then just just looking back at all the stuff that he's he's done and everything and how he didn't let like the culture shock or the language or education and all that stuff like set him beside like set him behind like that's dope but also, like, I think I have a little bit of the, if I set my mind into something, that's why I've said it before, I feel like I'm running at 40%, and I know I can do a lot more, but I don't apply everything mm-hmm. that I know I should. But as soon as I do apply something, I get obsessive, like crazy obsessive, to the point where I'm going to obtain it. And um, I just need to fucking do that with everything. So I feel like that as well, but at the same time, I feel like what's holding me back is the fear of, like, like I, I've told you before, like failing. Like I think that's the you biggest fucking like, thing. Let that shit go. Like who, who are you afraid of? I'm not. That, that's gonna fucking like, gonna say. Oh, that that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, it's just in a the mindset same shit. thing. It's like a not being. I think it's stems from being. When Is it I was your a, girl? Do you feel nah. like you don't want to be a failure in front of her? Hell no. Nah. I think it stems from when I was a when I was younger because my parents put everything into me like. When I was playing sports, like soccer, I was playing club. You have to pay monthly for that. You have to, we traveled, went to Hawaii, all this shit. I think it's an ego thing. I think it's a pride thing. Is like I felt like I failed everybody. Because I should have been, like, I should have made it to the pros in soccer. Like, I, they, I've, I was good enough. I, was, I just didn't put in the time. And, I, and once I got to high school, I started fucking around. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like, I, feel like I, I let everyone down. Like, Cause I was the oldest, and I feel like I should have done more than I I well, did. That 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 still happens to me to this day, where it's like, like um, there's a lot of those things where it's like I know I could have fucking went one direction and probably been somewhere mm-hmm. else, and even like I've had a lot of really close opportunities, big opportunities that would be life changing, in the last year and some this year, that I've gone all the way fucking so close, but they just don't happen. And it's it's crushing, dude. It's like after another, you just kind of feel like giving up. But it's yeah. just so crushing. But you, I just got to keep trying because I know. And it's kind of fucked up, too, because I wait for those opportunities to be able to be like, okay, like I, I, I feel like I'm at the point where I need that. Like I want to show that I that um, I didn't fuck up, that I can still do it. And then look, this is why I took the path that I took because it got me here and boom. Like look at, look at the result of it. And, and you're just kind of waiting for that opportunity. But yeah, I mean, like, my, what I'm trying to say is just like, you're not a failure. You, I think you just need to chase a new opportunity or chase a certain opportunity. And once you get to it, then I think you'll feel accomplished. You know, soccer, obviously, I don't think you're going to do that anymore, but no, there's much. other ways to fucking, yeah. to, I think, achieve that same gratitude. But I think it's once, because I had all that pressure on me when I was younger, that once I got to high school, I was able to, and my family had broken apart and everyone split up. Like, I didn't have that that overwhelming feeling that someone was watching me and, like, I had to do this, that I just started wilding the fuck out and I just, I just didn't even play anymore. I didn't even... Yeah, that's, I it, mean, that's what happened to everyone in high school. It happened to me, too. But I think it's, like, I'm also the middle child, too. That's different. But you're the oldest, so you have a yeah, lot of pressure on yourself. That's why I'm telling, like my kids now i want to be on their ass like i'm gonna be like i wish someone was on my ass when when i was in high school because when i was in high school my mom was working all the time and then after school i was i had all that time to i don't even know what the fuck you know what i mean like yeah. just to fuck around and then with my kids i'm gonna tell them like don't even fuck with gr- like have girls you don't need a girlfriend like don't even it doesn't even get good until after high school and after college <laughs> yeah. like, don't even fuck around like do your shit get your shit over with like, like i don't know i just true. have all this shit i want to tell them but i feel like they're not gonna live but 
that's, they probably that's how won't. I was too. Yeah, like, it I takes time, but it's like my think, Theo would always be like, "Oh, wrap it up, wear this, wear that, wear a condom. Don't, don't even have a girlfriend." I was like, "I wish I would have listened. to <laughs> oh, I love you, Melissa, but I wish I would have listened." <laughs> and that's the thing is like, I think um, like you, you want to instill those things into into your kids, and and like again going back to I think that was the last last podcast are we doing this right? But when I was a kid. Like I like I was never like a, a stupid dude. Like I would always get pretty good grades, but I didn't know the right path to college. I didn't know, like, okay, I need to get these extra curricular. Like, I can't even say it right now. <laughs> extra curriculum, curricular activities. I didn't know that I would have to take these classes to even get yeah. accepted to a college or blah blah blah. Like, our, like, it's because our parents they didn't even go to. No, their their right. education was so fucking so minimal, especially for my parents, immigrant parents. So like in our family, it's like they they didn't have that blueprint for me, and I didn't even know how to go about it. And I also went to a school, with the fucking lowest test scores in the country. It's a ghetto school, blah blah blah. It's a lot of people in the same boat. So there wasn't guidance. There wasn't someone to look up. They to. had a that fucking that wasn't a topic of pregnancy discussion. ward where they yeah had there were, we literally <laughs> had a fucking section where daycare. a daycare of fucking pregnant people in high school. Like it was bad. So and 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 with that said, it's like. I, like that's one thing that I do want to like try to instill when I have kids is is education. Not necessarily because I think because I know a lot of people that went to college are just still dumb as fuck or they're not doing anything with their life. It's just more so like don't think it's stupid not to be smart or not to like yeah. figure things out or or to like I don't know. I just don't want to fall into that stupid trend where it's like they're just some fuck boy or like or like they think something's cool and then they just like give up on. On, on anything because I think life is always just going to be easy. But there's also a thin line between you going to college and then being stuck in that world where you're just so naive to the real world. To yeah, the, no. I, you know I what I mean? Like, that. they, yeah. like, this is what I tell Melissa. Like, I love her, all that. She's book smart as fuck. Mm hmm. But when it comes to common sense, when it comes to reading the room, when it comes to vibes, when it comes to streets, <laughs> These fucking like girls, I swear, it's I don't even know if it's just a female thing, but they just don't get the hint. They don't read. They just don't get the. I feel like maybe we did probably didn't grow up the exact same, but I feel like we understand the vibe. We know how to read a room. We know how to yeah, you know, feel people's yeah. intentions, you can analyze. people's vibes, like. You read people better. It's not because we didn't go to college, but I think we've been been in the world earlier where we've seen, we've had more experience than if you went straight to from high school to just in, to straight books. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like when you go to college or when you study for a certain thing, you're stuck in that world. You're yeah. stuck in the book world where you're stuck into. You're not. Uh, you're. You're in a habitat where everything's controlled. Look at a at at a certain point, everything is controlled, and you're in within that. But but I need to add to that, like, cause, cause uh, um, in high school, I mean, I think that's where I learned most of my street sports. Even just growing up, uh, bad neighborhoods and blah blah blah. But um, then let's say someone that has the same background as me, they go into this four year college or whatever, they go away. Um, that necessarily that doesn't necessarily mean that they're just not going to be street smart. They'll still go out of parties. They'll still be out in the world. They'll still they're not locked up on this fucking campus. But going back to like them being stuck in that world, I think that world is dope because that world is filled with fucking people that are there to fucking learn, to fucking experiment, to fucking uh, better themselves, to fucking um, question what our society is like. This is just a fucking a world. It's basically an, in a small environment that's filled with. Um, fucking intelligent people that are wanting to innovate, wanting to fucking do different things. So there can be really cool things that'll take you on a path where you just stay amongst those people. So you don't have to worry about that street shit unless you're really around it. You know, and obviously it's everywhere, but like we all know those people that like just they're probably into just some nerdy shit, and that's all they've ever done, and they're still safe as fuck because they've always just went in that lane and and surround themselves in that. So what I'm saying is, like, I don't think you necessarily need those street smarts, but I'm fucking happy I have it. And I feel like it would be cool if everyone had it, but yeah, I don't think uh, it's, it's a necessity. So, 
out of all those people that do go to college, I'm not knocking college. I wish I would have went. Keep it 100 with you. I wish I would have went. But what I'm saying is not all of those people go to that route where they're able to go somewhere else. A lot of people go to college and then just end up back into the... Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean, trust A me, lot man. of them have book smart. Most of them don't have common sense. Yeah. I'd rather have common sense. There's a... There's a there's a, a, a thing that a lot of people know, and um, it's there's some people that just stay going to school. Hey, I'm going to go back to school and get my master's. I'm going to go to school. This. Because they're safe in that little And they're safe in that world, habitat. and they don't want to go into the yeah. real world. Where it's like, oh, fuck. Um, they don't want to face the real world. They're stuck. Like, yeah, they'd rather feel comfortable with what they know around. Yeah, like, just getting the check from from the government, from FAFSA, working some bullshit little like well that's what tenure crazy. is like you don't have to fucking you just stay with your own ideas your same ideas forever you don't have to fucking what contribute like when tenure when like when teachers get tenure yeah they can't really i don't i if i'm not mistaken you I can't really get just like fired the amount of time you've been there but when you put in that much of time you can't like you can do whatever you want you're not gonna get uh, laid off or fired oh really I didn't know that uh, I might be yeah, you know what that might be real science that be some, like, yeah that might, might be some be, fake news yo yeah, yeah, try google that, that shit <laughs> <laughs> that was just that's, 10 years that's being fucking just like, law and order <laughs> how long you been there <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was listening to this podcast it was fucking uh, interesting it was with Ben Baller and Ice-T and Ice-T was talking about like who he grew up with like the re- uh, real Rick Ross like fucking Freeway Rick Ross oh, freeway. that's Snowfall uh, Hulu FX. Well, I, I actually like met that dude. What? I tell the you? real work off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually used to have conversations with them. I shouldn't call him on the phone. But uh, when he got out of jail. But um, yeah, anyways, fucking Icy was talking about like, you know, like Tukey Williams, like the leader of the Crips and how he was like a bodybuilder. Like he was just a, as big as Arnold and shit. Like he was huge. And he would fucking um, like just guard up at parties and shit and, uh, and just intimidate everyone. Like his shit was fucking crazy. He was talking about all these like really cool old school stories and and him getting movie roles and blah blah blah, and how he's like the longest um, working black actor in history right now yeah, off of fucking Law and, uh, Law and Order. SVU. <laughs> yeah, <SVU. laughs> and uh, and they were just like talking about LA and everything and and how he grew up and and how like. I don't know, like everything from drug dealing to him not really ever wanting to be a gangster or claim a click. He was more about being a player. But yeah, it was it was super interesting. But it's because you said that Law and Order shit, so it made me think about it. I get stuck on those shows. Those shits are fucking crazy. Well, yeah, it's just it's because it's based on real life, low key. But I feel like I've seen them all. So oh, I especially have. at hotels, <laughs> yeah, those are, that shit's always on. They always have a fucking marathon. Have you ever seen? Um, this is more of a girl show, but it's also anyone can watch it. But HGTV, that's that shit like house, like house stuff. Like we're like, hey, we're gonna sell you oh, a house. rebuild or like a rebuild a house. Yeah, I've, like I've probably watched a couple. Like, that of shit them. makes me want to fucking. Ah, oh, there's some dope ass fucking houses. Like that shit's crazy. Well, I feel like real estate. I don't know if it's. I don't understand how it works really. If you get a listing, like if you work for a company and they give you like this, a, a list of people, or you have to go out and get your own. What do you mean, like a realtor? Yeah, do you have to go out and get your own clientele, or do they go ahead and give you a list, and then somehow you figure out? I think you know it what depend- I mean. I mean, I don't know. I've never done it, but I think it depends on the company. I think you can work for a company that has a existing clientele, but I think it's a lot of like um, promoting yourself, cold calling, emails, um, just trying to get out there and then there's always going to be a friend of a friend that knows a friend and mm-hmm. that's how you kind of start off but that's only that's only so many people though you know what I mean yeah but I think you don't need that many houses to flip before you can make like a pretty good commission so a lot of people do it as a side hustle and then obviously the people that are like really good at it have a clientele do it full time yeah because Melissa's mom does it but she also does tax I think tax is where you make most of your money but she's has that niche where they're all Spanish speaking a lot. Yeah. Because they obviously. And that's a good niche. Immigrants. And, because it's like, if you think about yeah, it, like. And they trust her, so they can obviously. So they're going to have kids, and then their kids are going to go there, and then. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have, to, you have to think about it. It's like when, uh, like those, you know, those people that only speak Spanish, most likely immigrants or, or whatever, um, 
um, they got their citizenship and never learned English or never learned it to an extent where like they just speak it all the time. Um, they needed someone that's like can speak both languages and understand both cultures. So like, like that niche that she has is good because there's fucking so many people, especially in California, that only speak Spanish. Yeah, we need to have them on. What uh, speaking Spanish or no? Just I feel like Melissa's dad. Like he tells me all the time like, when we speak. His story is fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, he's tried to come here to the U.S. multiple times, got caught multiple times, and then finally came here, worked in Norco at this, like, chicken farm, and, like, fucking somehow was able to live in an apartment, and then it's just crazy how they worked their way up, and then to now where they are. Like, it's... I don't know. It's just crazy. It's a different... Obviously, it was a different time, Cause I don't even know, you know how crazy it is. You can't get an apartment with one income. Yeah, I mean, like only unless you're a like, certain amount of people can. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not. You're even, gonna have to have a roommate. You're gonna have to. It's nuts. Roommate, a girlfriend. I mean, I feel like I need a girlfriend just to fucking buy a house. You know, <laughs> like oh, yeah. it's just like it's it's fucking crazy. But I mean, unless you're like really balling or you got like a good paying job, but even that takes a long time. Even to if get. you just had a good paying job by yourself, what apartments? What if you want something cool like twelve hundred a Shit, month? That's not cool. That's like whatever. Well, I'm just saying. Come on, even that. That's it's crazy. Yeah, if you want something dope, it's gonna cost you like sixteen, seventeen. <sighs> See, if you want not something that. really dope, you might as well just get a 20s. house. <laughs> yeah, that's what people say, but. No, I like, I mean, going back real quick to, to like, my uncle, for example, he owns fucking donut shops, fucking laundromats, he has houses, he has fucking, he had owned a whole apartments and, and, like, all that shit, and same thing, immigrant, fucking came out here, and how the fuck did he figure that out? It, it's just, it's just true. I think it's a drive thing, probably. I think once you're put in the corner, like, I don't think we've had to be, we haven't been put in that corner where, we're like, it's either do or die, like. Yeah, either that's you true. do this or you're fucking sleeping on the street. And I think about that, but it also pisses me off when I think that way. I'm like, I need something to push me to do that. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I said fuck, but fuck. Like, like time just doesn't stop. You know, like that's just a stupid mentality. You just gotta. Well, go fuck, I'm 31. Like, <laughs> this shit's. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, I was like 18. I'm about to move out. That I'm about to have my own house. Blah blah. blah. I'm like, fuck. I don't got shit. <laughs> Yeah. I got two kids. <sighs> two fucking kids. This is about to pop off, though. Damn. You know what's cool about this podcast, though? I forgot all about the coronavirus. Like, I, once I leave here, I have to go back to realizing, like, uh, yeah. shit's fucking wild out there right now. <laughs> like, but we'll at least see, I have something we'll to look forward to. I'm going to connect my TV. Oh, your new TV. Where'd you go? Best Buy? Yeah, Best Buy. Oh, yeah. You put it in your... What'd you get? Uh, Send me two? Huh? No, nah, hell no, because it's just for my room. Because I was going to, like, if I get something big, it's stupid to overkill. Because, you know, it's in a room. Man, you don't but I got, a, I got a 58. It's a weird size, right? Yeah, hell yeah, because I got, like, usually a, 55 or 66. But my, mine's 60 something, I think. Oh, no, no. What's before 58? 50, it's usually 55 and then 60, I 65. I think I have a 55. Um, that's still pretty big, bro. Yeah, I know it's big. <laughs> I, had a, big. I had a forty six in my room, and and that no, sh- I have fifty. Is there a fifty two? Yeah, I feel like I've that seen jumps those in my head for some reason. I think I, have I had a forty six. That's just pretty big, and that shit was still big in my room. Like like it, it, it was perfect. It was fine, but like I just felt like I needed a new TV. One, I mean, shit's cheap. And then I and I saw I did comparisons with Samsung and and these Roku TVs and, you and what like you can do. Four pairs of hands. And then, and then, uh, and then I was watches. like, "Fuck it, I just got it done." But yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and it's gonna link up with Alexa. So I'm like, "Hey, Alexa, turn off my TV, bitch." Fuck Alexa. <laughs> All right, let's fucking wrap this up. Seven one two five media dot com. Hit us up with fucking anything. I don't care what it is. You can ask us Surprise a question. Me. You can fucking tell us about yourself. Whatever it is, we'll read it on the podcast. Recipes. Uh, info at 7125media.com that's the email info at 7125media.com all the info will be under YouTube or under the podcast so just in case you didn't hear this and we're out